Hey guys, it's Bree. I um I just finished the last of the Tiffany Aching books and I kind of wanted to talk about them. Um, <laughs> the Tiffany Aching books is a series of five books written by Terry Pratchett. They take place in Discworld um, and they follow a character named Tiffany Aching. Uh, there are five books in total. The first one is the We Free Men. You have the second one, A Hat Full of Sky, Wintersmith, I Shall Wear Midnight, and The Shepherd's Crown is the final book. Um, this is a pretty fantastic series. It follows a young girl named Tiffany Aging, and she decides that she wants to be a witch. Um, she's from an area of Discworld that has never had really any witches. Uh, it's called the Chalk, and because the uh, witch's power is tied to the earth, uh, there's something about the chalk that makes it really difficult to perform magic there. Tiffany is spunky and clever and very relatable, I think is, is one of the ways that I would put that. She's just a really interesting character, especially because she grows over the course of the books. The books start off with Tiffany at nine years old, um, deciding for the very first time that she wants to be a witch. Um, finally kind of getting the chance to be one, and it follows her throughout her training, her kind of becoming a witch in her own right, and really coming into her full powers as a young woman. <laughs> the story also has a fantastic group of side characters, um, the most infamous of whom is the Wee Free Men or the Mac Mac Feagles. This is the first book and is the lightest hearted. Um, the Knack Mac Feagles in particular are kind of a hilarious band of fairy type guys who've been exiled from fairyland. They're these little six inch tall blue men who like to fight. Um, <laughs> they're pretty wild and untamed and somehow Tiffany gets their loyalty um, and they reappear throughout the rest of the books. There are some other really fantastic characters including Granny Weatherwax, who appears in a lot of the other witches' books, um, and some of the other the other witches who are among uh, Tiffany's age group, especially one called Petulia, who's Tiffany's best friend. And they're all just enjoyable and really clever, and encourage Tiffany to be as clever as she can be. Um, <laughs> the stories themselves are done in a kind of episodic way. Um, each story has its own villain and its own challenges for Tiffany, but what I like about that is even though each story kind of stands by itself, there's themes that go throughout the story, um, and as the stories go along, each of those adventures kind of sticks with her. It's not one of those monster of the week kind of stories. Um, each of those interactions that she has in the previous books really impact the later books as well. Another thing I really like about it is that Tiffany really, she ages throughout the story. Um, and so you get to go from seeing her being this, you know, spunky nine-year-old with too much time on her hands probably, um, to in the last two books being a young woman who's really coming into her power and who's dealing with the kind of self-doubt that goes with being an adult, um, and especially being a new adult. <laughs> I just thought the progression and the way that Pratchett shows this is just so perfect, and it captures so much of this kind of, I think, universal or almost universal experience that people have of becoming an adult and having to take care of yourself and take on responsibilities for the people around you and realizing for the very first time that that's maybe more stressful than you thought it was when you kind of were interacting with the adults in your life as a child. The stories as a result kind of get increasingly dark. The first book I, the first thing I thought of was like, I want to read this with my seven-year-old baby Sati, um, he, cause he would love this book. This is like the perfect book for, to read with a kid. Um, or to read, I would say, about childhood. It's a lot of that kind of fearlessness and decisive bravery that's so perfect in children's books. 
and as it gets <laughs> older, um, the stories get increasingly dark, and in fact, I would say the darkest one is my favorite out of the entire series. That's I Shall Wear Midnight, and this is the one where Tiffany's kind of dealing with who she is and being kind of uncertain of herself for the first time. Um, there's also kind of this overwhelming sense that her community is rejecting her for the first time, and it gets she's not necessarily in a dark place but the overtones of the story i would say is is dark and i liked the i liked the growth throughout the series it has his just classic humor it has a lot of energizing kind of storytelling and those conflicts that he he makes both at the same time really complicated and you know they definitely have those funny moments the last book is The Shepherd's Crown, and I would say this is the one book that doesn't necessarily fit 100% with the rest of the series. Um, it was unfinished at the time that it's published. It was going through editing and expansion. You can kind of tell because it's only about 250 pages, and the rest of the books become increasingly long. Um, this is the last book that Terry Pratchett really wrote before he died. and. <laughs> It's sad to me because I know that this was going to be the perfect book when it was finished. Um, the story is just, it's like the perfect ending for Tiffany's storyline. Um, and so seeing it unfinished, part of it, like at least I get the ending of the story and I know that he had the perfect ending for her. And part of it is me being so sad that it's unfinished and that the story was likely to be much more in depth and have kind of a more inline tone. This one to me, when you read it, it sometimes it falls a little flat and I think that that has so much to do with it being in the middle of the writing process as opposed to being a finished work. That being said, it is a great ending for the story despite the fact that it's unfinished and you can kind of tell that it's unfinished, I think it's still the right way to end the story for the characters and for the storyline overall. <laughs> it also, it definitely is going to have a couple of tear up moments for you if you are a big fan of the Witches series overall. Um, or even just if you read the rest of the Tiffany Aching books and you get to this one, you're going to be like, this is so sad. Um, <laughs> So overall, I really loved these these books. I'm not normally somebody who goes and runs out immediately and buys the next book in a series. Um, originally, I had kind of picked up the first one to see what it was all about, to try it out, and I finished it in one day and went out that evening to pick up the next two. Um, it's just not very like me, um, but it was it was perfect. I think this is a fantastic introduction if you really want a sense of what Discworld is and is about and Terry Pratchett's writing style. If you're looking to get into his stories but you kind of want to test them out, this is a really well contained kind of set of characters to start examining and to start um, kind of introducing yourself to him and his works without the overwhelming um, <laughs> expanse of stories that is the whole of Discworld. You know, looking at 40 stories is a lot different than looking at five and being able to digest them. And I think this is a perfect place for people to start with Discworld, actually. Um, you should let me know what you think of the Tiffany Aching books. I really love them. Um, I hope if you've read them that you love them too. <laughs> I hope you're having a fantastic reading week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.